Hello and welcome to the Overland Journal podcast. I am your host, Scott Brady, and for this week's episode, Matt Scott and I talk about the American Expedition Vehicles Prospector. This vehicle is built on the Ram full-size chassis. It's built on their 2,500 and 3,500 trucks, and it is available in a standard Prospector on 37-inch tall tires and a, the, the much-envied Prospector XL, which is on 40-inch tires, and it has wider fender flares and some other accessories that allow for that kind of tire size fitment. We do a deep dive on this vehicle. The reason why we're covering this truck is because it is such a great fit to the Overland Traveler. It's available in a diesel drivetrain, a heavy-duty diesel drivetrain. It's available in a three-quarter ton and a one-ton variant, which means that you can put pretty much as much weight as you would like on the thing uh, with even over 3,000 pounds of payload. This is a very capable vehicle with a ton of capacity. It has the durability of the Cummins diesel, and then it has the legendary engineering and quality of American Expedition vehicles. So please enjoy our conversation about the amazing Prospector. This content is brought to you by Overland Journal our premium quality print publication. The magazine was founded in 2006 with the goal of providing independent equipment and vehicle reviews, along with the most stunning adventures and photography. We care deeply about the countries and cultures we visit and share our experiences freely with our readers. We also have zero advertorial policy and do not accept any advertiser compensation for our reviews. By subscribing to Overland Journal, you're helping to support our employee-owned and veteran-owned publication. Your support also provides resources and funding for content like you are watching or listening to right now. You can subscribe directly on our website at overlandjournal.com. So we're going to talk about the 2022 AEV Prospector XL today. Prospector. I like, I like it. I like it. Well, I mean, they're just, they're literally a super truck. Yeah, they're, and they're, they're kind of like, like the an super American Overland. Unimog. They're yeah. like the super Overlander truck. And, I mean, I've done trips all the way up to Tuk Tuk in yeah. Prospector XLs and Prospectors. And you've owned a Prospector, and yeah. it's a really important model. AEV does a lot of great work. Why don't you kind of give a background or a backstory on what the Prospector is? Yeah, so, so the Prospector is basically like it's, it's a conversion. It's a vehicle conversion, right? Like, I mean, technically speaking, there's, there's really, you know, if you, if you go into a VIN search, there's no such thing as an AEV Prospector XL. It's a RAM 2500 3500 i think they're starting to do some chassis cap stuff on like the 4500 and 5500 makes sense but so uh, long story short so you if you want one you've got a few options you can either send aev you you buy the truck you have the truck and i i, I like to think that and i like to think i do think that if you buy your own truck and and you have it converted it has to have somewhat lowish miles like they're I don't think they convert stuff that has 40, 50,000 miles, although, although maybe they can. Or you just buy an AEV VIND truck. And I know that that is uh, a little bit of a, um, you know, redundant to what I just said, but there, there is actually like a little AEV VIND play on it. So the whole, the whole thing with the Prospector, there's, there's the Prospector, there's the Prospector XL. Prospector means 37s, XL means 40s. For the purposes of this conversation when I say prospector or PXL we're talking about the one with 40s so I mean like I don't know you you start with what is a pretty good truck I mean it's basically kind of a an uprated you know Wrangler when you look underneath of these things you've got a five link in the rear you do have a radius arm up front on them they're really pretty capable trucks no question I think yeah, no question great drive line um Great but, motors. I mean, everybody respects the Cummins yeah. diesel. But AEV puts so much work into them. Like if you're going to, if you're if you're going to go and you're going to build a, you know, a, a full size truck, this AEV Prospector sits in this kind of classy territory. So 
On the XL, I think the, the most distinguishing feature, aside from the 40-inch tires, are these big high mark fender flares that they do. Yeah, which look factory they and look then totally, factory. totally complement the truck. Yeah. I, I've, and they cover I've, the tires. Yeah, I've whacked them on some stuff. I want to say Dave said they're made from kind of like a kayak material. Like they're Ah, makes sense. They're they're really stout. So literally the the fenders on, on the front and back of the vehicle end up getting cut. Mm. And there's like these new fender liners and these over fenders that go in and you end up with this, you know, I want to say they're forty by 1350. I think so. Yeah. A couple, on, they use a couple different manufacturers. I don't know what he's using currently. I know, I know he, that there's a problem getting 40 inch tires. I know that he's also used the 41 inch. I oh, super swampers. Yeah. Yeah. Which they do look great on the vehicle. Um, they're a little narrower. Yeah. Um, the one I had a prospector XL for months, I think it was in 2019. I remember that yeah. 2019 or 2018. I had a green one. Um, and it had the, um, Toyos on there. And yeah. It was, it was great. M mine had the Toyos. I, I had no problem with those tires, um, how, for how I use the tire or how I use the truck. I would have rather had an all terrain tire, but it's just not available. Right. Right. Like I think they use Toyos. I think they use Coopers. And then I think that you have an option to do the, the super swampers. Yeah. Maybe that's a call in thing, but, um, Anyway, the, 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 whole, the whole purpose of this truck at the end of the day is to fit a really large tire with as minimal lift as possible. So you end up with a three inch lift on the front and about a one to two inch lift on the rear, depending on options and things like that. Like mine had air suspension, which was really cool. I don't think they had to lift those as much because um, if you put weight in the bed, do they put it like a make. do they put a spacer? Yeah, there's back a there? spacer. Nice. And, you know, it's it's AEV, so it's super well engineered. There's a spacer. There's like a there's like a some kind of extension to the to the uh, the the height sensor. Yeah, um, and they probably relocate the the pan hard rod and all those other things. Yeah, yeah. everything's relocated. I want to say there's a there's a there's a different steering knuckle up front. It kind of gets a high steer. It gets um, a hydraulic assist steering. Um, the whole axle actually gets moved forward. I think it's an inch and a half or 1.6 That makes sense. So, or so they can get the sweep of that huge tire and not, yeah. hit, the, not hit the body. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that makes sense. So, so it's interesting. So I actually had a, I had a, I had a 2021 Ram 2500, if you remember the, yep. the silver one. I left it stock. I was actually just intending to send it to AEV to get it converted. Well, this was peak pandemic and it was just an absolute nightmare. Um, I ended up trading that for a TRX and then I traded the TRX for the, for the prospector. Mm -hmm. So I've had like all of these interesting kind of Ram, um, truck experiences. And I think that it's always fascinating to actually buy the, ve buying the vehicles yourself and you're putting the money in yourself. I think you get a different perspective than, than that. And, and that's kind of what I want to dive into. Um, you know, generally speaking, when you're buying an American car, the worst the worst part of it is the dealer experience. Yeah, always. I, I went <clears> through Jackson Ellis in uh, in Glendale. They're a, they're a huge AEV dealer, and it was like super painless. Um, Which know. makes sense. I mean, that's a premium vehicle to a yeah. fairly affluent mm -hmm. def demographic, so they better like not screw you around yeah it better, yeah. Be, so, it better so, be a pleasant experience so yeah so literally we're just going to start from the beginning on on how to buy one what it's like to buy one um this this particular one was one that jackson had specced and it was already being shipped in i think maybe somebody had dropped out from it you know he knew i was kind of looking for one called me bought it did the deal it was it was it was super easy and it was in matte black too uh, yeah black black matte, not matte black matte black yeah, it was Matt's black. Exactly. Yeah. It, so it was a, this particular truck was a limited Longhorn, and that got you, I, I, I want to say the Longhorn package kind of used to be on the Laramie side, now it's on the limited side, so it gets some nicer headlights that kind of swivel, um, automatic high beams, and uh, it was a really beautifully specced truck. The reason I typically don't like the limited Longhorns is they get like this chrome front grill. Mm. But on this particular one, I don't know if it ended up being Jackson that swapped out the parts or AEV that painted them. 
all of that was gone and it was and it was black. So it was kind of a kind of a unique truck. It um, looked it looked really handsome. It was I mean, it looks a lot like that TRX that I'm driving today, which yeah. is like all like very tastefully blacked out. Yeah. Well it's actually funny, like the, the TRX and the PXL are, are are very similar vehicles. Like the price points are pretty similar, but they're about on opposite sides of the spectrum as you could get for use case for use case you know that the, they're both amazing but totally different the pxl yeah. uh depending on how you spec it i mean you know mine had the air suspension it was a 2500 the i'm 25, a fan of the air suspension big i wouldn't get it again oh it you didn't wouldn't have, what didn't you like about it, it? didn't have much travel oh and it, that's it, interesting it, it, it ended up just running through its travel really, really quickly. On compression. On compression, yeah. So when you got into corrugations or something off-road, the back of the truck really bounced. Um, I'm not going to... So you were getting a lot of step out in corrugations and stuff, where it was chattering and stepping out? Yeah, it out. chattered a little bit. I mean, I, I, I would probably... You did go from a TRX to a Prospector. So it's... <laughs> for those that are listening. You know, but... How, the, mu how much travel is on the TRX? 15 inches I or know, something I like think, that? I think, it's, I think it's like 12. Okay. The TRX does not have as much travel as the as Raptor. The Raptor, got it. Um, I mean, to be fair, the TRX could blow through its travel pretty quick too. Yeah, Just I've, I've noticed that. 700 horsepower and, and whatever. Anyway, so, so you, you have these two trucks that are like these two kind of eccentric luxury trucks super trucks yeah. super trucks and you know and in in one's incredibly fast one is just ridiculous i mean you look at a prospector xl they just look gnarly i mean that the the, <laughs> the new aev bumper for the rams they do is so cool the way yeah. the way the factory lights integrate so new trucks have like these 360 cameras um and they even like have a, a, a camera relocation kit for it. It brings it from the grill to the bumper, and it doesn't affect with the optics or, or really distort it. They put a lot of a lot of work in it. It was really cool, and I think that's what that's what really dominates the Prospector um, is is the attention to detail that you cannot get by having a truck built by you know. Your local, local four-wheel drive yeah. shop. I mean, no disrespect, but they're coming up with individual solutions, and, yeah. and that's fine. Where this is fully integrated system. A yeah. AEV is integrating systems and engineering, you know, a a, a production solution for an problems. OEM level quality solution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, mine was an early twenty-two car, so it didn't come with the the eighty-one hundred XP, you know, remote reservoir shocks. And the cool thing on those is the the same guy that did the shock tuning for the TRX did the shock tuning for AEV mm. on those Bilstein shocks, which was was a little interesting tidbit that that was kind of dropped to me. Um, so I actually, after the fact, upgraded to those, and I upgraded to the brush guard. I um, like that brush guard. Oh, the brush guard made it for me. Well, it's just animal strikes. You've got this incredibly expensive truck. Yeah. And you live in Prescott, where you know I've like. The only time I've ever hit an animal was in Prescott. And, you know, there's deer everywhere on Williamson Valley where we both live. It's yeah. like, it's like, you know, I yep. just, I just have to go further through the gauntlet than you do, but yeah, it, yeah, like yeah. there's deer everywhere out there. Yeah. Um, I, I, my favorite part of that vehicle was the bumper and the brush guard and the integration that went into everything on that. Mm -hmm. Um, the rear bumper was great. You just don't look at it as much. So yeah. you don't get as, um, infatuated with it but you know every detail on the vehicle was was really good um, and I think that's another thing that's worth noting is that when AV designs something they're looking at it at the highest level of quality and integration possible but they're also really thoughtful designers yeah so nothing looks out of place no it just it most just after so beefy and good most aftermarket components they kind of look like they're screaming on the truck whereas the reason why you don't really pay that much attention to the rear bumper is because it just looks like a heavy duty factory option. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, there, there, like you said, there's, there's actual automotive designers that are working there. Yeah. There's actual automotive engineers that are working there and it's not most of them, I believe <laughs> most of them. Yeah. yeah. It's not the cardboard aided design thing that you yeah. get with a lot of you know, I mean, like, I'm not saying that there aren't other strong bumpers on the market For that sure. can take an impact or, or, sure. or whatever. That's that's not what I'm implying. But when you look at the AEV bumper and you understand what what the stamping is and, 
you know, these thoughtful little details, like on the front recovery points, they're what I presume is like a nodular iron or mm -hmm. something. There's even like a little skid plate built in that if you ran out of approach angle, you could just push through it on these little, these little kind of little nodular skids that are built yeah, into your cast your iron skid plates. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. Um, nodular iron skid plates. And then the AEV bumpers are some of the few in the aftermarket period that are stamped. Uh, yeah. And the complexity of their stamps, stampings, and the way that they integrate the level of quality material, coatings, yeah. finishes, it's all at OEM mm -hmm. level or better, yeah. uh, which is what means that like 10 years out, your aftermarket bumper is still going to look great. Yeah. So, you know, let's, let's talk about what it's like to drive a PXL. And, um, and maybe also like use case. So like yeah, since yeah. Overlanders are listening, like how would... Like, how would someone use a prospector? Like, what would be the, the reason to buy a prospector for overlanding? In your mind. I mean, I've got some um, I think it's, it's, it's a bit of flash, a bit of flair, mm -hmm. a bit of, um, yeah, like it's a flashy car. Like, it's on 40s, and it looks, it is expensive, it looks expensive, but it looks like this factory thing. What is the use case? The use case is putting a camper in the back or a, a, a scenario where you need really high flotation because you're going to you're going to air down to, yep. you know, 20 PSI and a 40 in a, in a truck like that. And you're just going to float over snow and mud and that kind of stuff. Um, I think if I was an overlander, I would not have specced mine the way I did. Mine admittedly was more of a was towing a race trailer. That was kind of my thing. I needed to put dirt bikes in the back of it. Um, it was never really a primary overlander for me. I looked at the prospector in my case as a toy. Um, it's not, it, it's not a toy though. It's a, it's a truck that's really made for work. I mean, you could use this on a job site. You could use this in the field, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for commercial work. Um, and that's one of the things that's interesting about yeah. the prospector XL to me is that it is available from everything from what you bought, which is like this amazing mm -hmm. do it all daily driver, yeah. tow the trailer, all that stuff. But then they also sell Prospector XLs that are regular cab yeah. with a tray bed that you install a camper on and you, you literally have an American Unimog. Yeah. That, and they super, look great. Super cool, if yeah. You, yeah, if you look up, for those that are listening, just look up a Prospector XL tray bed. To me, there is, and I'm going to come out here and say it right now, there is not a single vehicle that I have lusted over more for a longer <laughs> period of time than that truck. They're, they're period. Really period. When I drove the white one, I mean, Dave Harriton had a manual transmission. Mario white, had. Yeah, and Mario Donovan has it now at, at AT Overland. Um, and I drove that truck with Dave up to Tuk Tuk Tuk. Um, and I drove the other ones as well, the four doors and the ones that are more spec like your vehicle. But yeah. That one with a manual transmission on 41s with a tray, it was like if there was ever a Scotty mobile. It's, it's I don't know why cool. I've not bought I don't know why I've not just bought what I really want, but <laughs> like that is like that is the truck that I really I want. I think that they're the coolest because they're the least practical. I think whenever you add <laughs> practicality to something, <laughs> that's so it true. becomes less that's so, inherently that's cool. That's so true. And I don't need a four door. Yeah. I don't have kids. So, you know, it'd be me, girlfriend. You know, yeah. and and then a camper on the back, and I, or just awesome. maybe me, yeah, yeah. you know, or whatever. I, I think the thing with the Prospector XL is that you don't you look at it and it looks very professionally done. I mean, yeah. everything's proper. They have their own badging that looks great, um, but it drives really good too. It's shock. That's another like, thing that people that are listening. It's shocking to be in a truck on 40s, set the cruise at 85, and you're literally going down the road with one hand gently on the wheel. Like, I've owned the exact, I mean, it's not the exact same truck, but I had this 21, 2500, and I had the 22, 2500. It, obviously, there's little, there's little changes here and there, but same drivetrain, same, same transmission, same gearing, same everything. The Prospector was easier to drive. It rode better. It was better on the road. Oh, um, that's interesting. That is so. Here's like quite the, the comment. The, the crazy thing is that the 
I do think that the prospector's biggest weakness right now is that it does need gearing. But like with the uh, the the stock twenty one, it was geared so low. I think they have three seventy threes, which isn't like so low. Well, but, but with it, the amount of torque yeah, that it thousand, makes, thousand you couldn't thousand. act like like when we're pulling out of the office over here by yeah. the corner, and you need to like kind of get on it to go go whatever. If there's like any kind of moisture or any kind of sand or anything, you're just yeah. you're not going anywhere. Sure. Where with the prospector, like it almost kind of geared it down a little bit, and yeah. it was just really easy to drive. Sure. Something about again. So you do think that the prospector needs lower gearing or you don't just to, clarify. I do, but I, I, I don't think it's essential, but I think it at the end of the day would be better. Um, I know even, that I know that I'm, I know that I'm 10% I'm, lower. Or yeah. Something. I think like a, like a 456 would be perfect in that truck, but no one makes gearing for the Rams right now. They have some kind of, uh, you know, there's a thing. The, the, there's a thing. <laughs> like the carriers integrated into the into the ring a little bit, and like I don't think anybody's tooling anything up right now. And I think that automotive production is screwed in the aftermarket, so nothing. But I can't out. believe that they don't have four tens available. It was a it was a little. Um, I'm not going to say frustrating, but like you know, in in previous time, they have put 456s in the PXLs. Sure. That was just part of the option. They can't do that right now because nobody makes the gears. Um, anyway, but... Well, that's good to know, it, though. It just... Because it we have to be able to talk about the things that aren't perfect. Yeah, that, and that's one Because there's so the, much about the truck that's perfect. That's one of the things yeah. that isn't perfect. You, you also talk... When I say it's easier to drive, I mean it's easier to drive when you're in the middle of Texas and there's no cars around you. <laughs> um, it, there, is, there is no way... To get around that it is a big truck right? it's gigantic it's yeah. it's 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 gigantic it's it's honestly not that much wider than like a than a trx um but it drives the trx big. is wide the trx too. is wide right um when you look at a prospector in a photograph it looks so perfect yeah. like the the dimensions the tire size but just so that everyone that's listening are when you walk up to one of these things it is gigantic it's big it's gigantic. yeah like a, in a photograph it looks so balanced and perfect and at home in the terrain and everything but yeah. your truck was gigantic so so yeah let's 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 be balanced here and talk about why i sold it um i wanted something smaller yeah to be honest um i wanted to downsize a little bit it it was you know i have i have people know i have a greyhound i'm a doting greyhound you know, father rescue dad. Yes. And, uh, I have to lift this 80 pound dog into a truck on forties and it's just like, you're like hurling him up in there. Yeah, sure. So it was, I mean, that's a me problem. You know, like you're buying a large truck, you look at it, it's large. Yeah. It's big. It's, it's not a fault of the vehicle or anything. It's, it's, it's a personal preference. Um, but it's something to be aware of. Yeah. Yeah. I got it with the steps, that automatically come out. I did them. From, I like that. I did them from the factory because um, really then they're just like, a little bit more integrated in really the screen like, and stuff. I really like those. That steps. made it. That made it livable. Yeah. If those steps weren't there, I think that. Um, I think that'd be a no go for me. Yeah. Like if I was to ever buy another one, which. Like, yeah, and you're six one, so yeah. like put that into perspective. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so. You know, that's kind of one of the downsides I think of it is just it, you know, you have to walk into it knowing that you're buying a big truck. Where that affected me was that I didn't like to drive it off road. It was black. It was really pretty. It wasn't my primary off road vehicle. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna pinstripe it and you have to just be careful. Um, Another reason for the white. Or, 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 or you just regular cab, cab, <clears throat> yeah. regular cab tray bed. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> what, like, exactly. <clears throat> for me, when I look at that, it's it's got the biggest challenge that we have as Overlanders is payload. Yeah, and there's lots of things to love about mm. midsize trucks. Yep, but none of them have a one ton capacity anymore. You used to be able to buy midsize trucks or compact trucks with one ton ratings, but 
the most I've seen is a ranger at like sixteen hundred pounds, or maybe so, a maybe enough, a gladiator at seventeen hundred pounds, but they're the same. AEVs like real deal, so they replace the tire placards on the vehicle. They replace the you know gross vehicle weight labels, mm-hmm. and and all of the stuff gets replaced as a as like a secondary manufacturer. I don't know the exact term, but they weigh the vehicles and they take into account the uh, the weight of the accessories that's in them. Yeah. So I want to kind of explain this. Um, I get, you know, payloads a conversation around the campfire with overlanders and let's, let's take the Ranger 1600 pound or 1700 pound payload. Great. Um, well to the guy around the campfire, his truck still has a 1700 pound payload. No. Well, after you put the bumper and the tires yeah. and the wheels and the this and the that, and it whatever, all reduces it. you you really have a, 800 pound payload or, or something like that. And then, and then you go from there. So the stated payload on my prospector was somewhere between 1600 and 1700 pounds, which really isn't that much for a full size truck with that big of a diesel engine and whatever. So, you know, that's you're, after all of the, that's, modifications. that is, yeah, that is the actual payload capacity stated by AEV. Now the, it's a really simple solution. You buy the 35. Exactly. You just go to the next bigger truck. My next truck you know, like, uh, honestly, like maybe it, it's an interesting story at the end, why I got rid of, um, <laughs> yeah. why I get rid of this, but, um, you know, maybe I would consider another PXL, even though it's big and I get fatigued on that, I would do a 3,500. There's yeah. people that actually prefer how the suspension works on there. It's a more traditional leaf sprung system versus a coil sprung system. But if you look at how Ram does the coil springs on the 2,500s, they're very inboard and they're very susceptible to the crown of the road. So the car can kind of drive a little weird. Mm. Um, I don't think it's as bad with the uh, uh, air suspension on there because I think it's a little bit more giving and it kind of adjusts a little bit. Um, But I would get a 3500. I would also get a 3500 if I ordered them because I could do the high output motor. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about some other things that aren't great about the Prospector. Um, Most of that is going to be ram the engine's outdated the transmission comes from the 90s to be really blunt the the six four five rfe or something i mean like it's an old transmission it's a it's it's a six speed it's not particularly refined and you get into the every other competitive product that you're looking at you know trx eight speed HP, 8HP ZF transmission, yep. fantastic. Um, you get into the Super Duties and it's the Chevys, 10, speed. 10 speeds. They're insane. And they're really good. So good. Um, you know, like the Earth Roamer has a six speed from the Ford. That's a 2011. That transmission is so much better than the one that's in a 22 or 23 Ram. Um, the ISIN that you get with the high output motor is even rougher. And I, I don't know if it's just me, but I keep hearing of people that are having problems with that ice, and even though it's meant to be the heavy-duty transmission. Mm. Other problems with it is you look at a Tremor, which is realistically it's most, you know, I mean, there's the Power Wagon, there's the Rebel. You know, now there's the AEV uh, Silverado HD. Um, and Yeah, which is a great-looking truck. Yeah, by the way. yeah, a, a awesome. Um but you look at all the competition and you're looking at Ford with 1,200 pound feet of torque yep. and you're looking at, and a 10 speed right. and 500 plus horsepower. And then you're looking. I remember when I drove the Tremor, you literally feel, felt like you were turning the tires on the wheels. There was yeah. so much power. It yep. literally, I, like you were wondering what's going to break because it was so violently yeah. powerful. So so you end up in, in, in the, 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 the positive to the prospector or honestly, the positive to the Ram platform is AEV is, is AEV <laughs> and the interior. Yeah, no, the interior is great. Holy cow, beautiful. You know the the beautiful. cab of the truck. Yeah, beautiful. You know, goes back to what 2016, 17, something like that. If not before that, like yeah. it's it's not the same cab. The fifth gen cab on the fifteen hundreds is so the TRX is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, why that's not on the HD trucks. Hopefully it's coming. I mean, I'm sure it is a a PXL 
that's on the new Ram architecture with the the proper new cab, which is just you know like the the current generation HD trucks. You know, like you pull the door out and you can kind of you pull it by the handle and you kind of see the door move yep. a little bit. Like they're they're pretty well done, but it's it was tooled to be cheap to manufacture and the new stuff is, is better. So like my next prospector, see, I'm already saying it. <laughs> They're good trucks. My next one, I'm going to wait fifth gen cab. I, it needs a better transmission and you want the high output. Motor. And, and it, it's not that you need it, but I would want it. Well, if you're going to have a yeah. super truck on 40s, you might as well if, have if a thousand, you're, if a you're thousand paying, pounds of torque. Yeah. You know, like a prospector is going to cost you somewhere between ninety and one hundred and thirty thousand okay. dollars. That's a lot of money. Um, the AEV upfit, depending if you do just prospector, you do prospector XL starts at like fifteen or twenty, which is a lot of money. But you can build that into financing, which is really important for a lot of people. You know, and you're not. Think, think of the time savings. Like the coolest thing with the prospector is I got a built, a beautifully built truck from day one. Yeah. Everybody knows I've built a lot of vehicles. And, and you did nothing to it. I think I, I did remember. long range tank. Okay. Yeah. You did essentially nothing to it. Essentially nothing so what to was it. So what was the size of the new long range tank? 52 gallons. Okay. That's from nice. From Titan. So and maybe 700 something mile like range? That. Yeah, yeah. Just more than you ever need to think about. Yeah. Uh, sure. It's, it's there. Uh, you know, what did you do with the spare? Did you go with the bed mount or you just went with no spare? I went with the bed mount cause that's, that's the way the truck was equipped. I would do it again. Um, I, I want to say like, that's an interesting, like loss of space. I find <sighs> has anybody done a swing out or anything like that? Yeah, you, you can do a swing out. So, so yeah, maybe, maybe that's another negative to the truck is, um, yeah, the spare tire there's no, yeah. I mean, that's just an inherent problem with a 40 inch tire is there's really nowhere to put it. Um, you can put it on like a rigged swing out, which is what a lot of the PXL guys do. That gives you your full use of the bed. But then when you need to use the bed, you've got this extra step. It's yeah. not really that big of a deal. Sure. I find it a pain in the ass. So uh, putting it in the bed, it's on the driver's side at the very front of the bed, and it's and it's vertical. Um, if uh, it do, and it looks it looks cool and it doesn't seem to to block the view. You can still fit a dirt bike in the <clears> bed because you can run it. Front tire goes in the passenger front of the bed and 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 to the side. And yours had a six and a half foot bed. Six and a half foot bed. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I, a dirt bike guy myself, I really, it's it's really hard to beat the Fords if you're if you are loading dirt bikes regularly. Um. Ford has this built-in bed step with this handle yeah. and they have this six and three quarter bed, which means you can get two dirt bikes in with, with the tires yes. or the, the front tire handlebars are turned inwards. They kind of kiss at the front and then you have all of this room in the middle. It's, it's actually, that is and the And you can perfect, close the tailgate. And you can close the tailgate. Yeah. You can only do that with one bike on the Rams. Yeah. Um, so where I'm going with that is even though that tire is there for me, it didn't really matter because yeah. you can only get one bike in there. Anyways. Yeah, sure. I had the rear view camera, like the, the mirror, I think it's a system from Magna or something. Um, it was an option like of the 22s, the clear view nice. system. So it <clears> actually <throat> had a camera kind of on that that third brake light it ah, was right there. Got, so so then you don't even a, see the tire. I only had a little bit of it in the corner yeah. and you can actually adjust the field of view. Um, so it was very transparent. If you turn that off, you're like, Oh wow. I basically can't, I can't see anything out <laughs> yeah, of the truck. Sure. That was a really, really worthwhile upgrade and it made the truck feel and drive smaller and, and more maneuverable, particularly with the 360 cameras as well. Um, while it was big and you just, you know, if you get, if there's one parking spot and the two people next to you have parked like yeah you just you you're you're probably not gonna fit now a lot of that's a mental like a mental thing because the vehicle isn't actually any wider because um while the fenders and the track width increases it's it's still the same width at the mirrors sure right so um <clears throat> that that's a little bit of a mental game that you have to get used to with the truck but you do think about it because it's it's big, 
it's pretty maneuverable. I don't think it's any less maneuverable than a standard 2500. Um, but I don't know. And anything that you do come in contact with, the PXL is going to win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's big. I think you just have to walk into it knowing that it's big. Yeah. But like, like obviously it's big. Like, like it's not like you can't. They even call it the XL. Yeah, like you can't you can't fault an <clears throat> elephant for being big. They're as big of it as an elephant. They're an elephant. A PXL is as big as a PXL. <clears throat> yeah. Um, or as an elephant. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So um, I did the worn. Mine had the worn sixteen five winch on it. Um, never used it. Looked good. Fit good in there. Uh, just, I think it's a good idea to have it. I think like it's the a problem idea is, is it. when, when a prospector gets stuck, you have a real problem yeah. because what it takes to get a prospector stuck to begin with means that you are in a place that not much else is going to get to. Mm-hmm. So you really want to have some kind of self recovery. I, I always liked having it around because in, in the same thing, if the roamer, if the earth roamer gets stuck, we take it pretty far off road. Usually that's like the only vehicle that could get it unstuck sure so to speak so that was i guess one of the thoughts so is your chase vehicle for the earth rover (laughs) this all just sounds so terrible like (laughs) what has happened man like i i used to like ride scooters in asia and i had like 12 dollars to my name and i think i was happier um that's usually how it goes yeah yeah um yeah anyway so uh i i really enjoyed it um do i think at the end of the day it's too big it yeah honestly i I never felt see it i'm i'll I'll pull back because i i think if you're buying a truck like that you're buying something that has that kind of capability Mm -hmm. and capacity so you're saying that i want i want to be able to have a camper and i want to be able to go on these really remote trails so i can get further away from all the other people yeah and that's why you buy if if you're looking at it not as a fashion accessory as or, or as a you know status signaling, which that vehicle does a great job of. Mm -hmm. Um, If you're looking at it just from like how I would want to use it is if I bought a regular cab, tray bed, prospector on 40s or 41s, it's going to allow me to get to the places that I couldn't Mm. couldn't get with my AT4. Um, And I would put something like a Scout on top or or like a... They do get really awkwardly tall. Yeah. I, but so I, like so does an earth roamer. Yours is almost twelve yeah. feet tall. Yeah, yeah. So um, you know, once you're into that category, you're going to have a tall vehicle to begin mm-hmm. with. But with the shorter wheelbase of the regular cab and the clearance that's provided by the tray bed, um, you really do end up with this vehicle that is like got Rubicon level capability. Mm. Now you're not you're bigger, so you're not going to fit everywhere a Rubicon can yeah. go. But you can go so many places that others can't. And I think that that's the, that's the argument for the prospector for me as an overlander yeah. is I have, if I get a 3,500, I have over three, I mean, let's call it 2,800 pounds of payload by the time the conversion's done. Yep. I can put any camper I want on there. It'll also take additional fuel and water and whatever supplies I want, mm. front winch, rear winch, whatever yeah. I want to install on the vehicle it can do all of that and it can get me into places that you just cannot get a sprinter van. Yeah. You can't get a regular overland vehicle. I, I think the, that's the argument for me. The Super money, capable. the money thing would be to look at that new rebel. Uh, it, it's kind of like a, I mean, it's, I guess it's parallel to the power wagon. It's, mm. it's like the diesel power wagon. Yeah. But I believe that it's meant to be a little bit more work oriented. Mm. That gets the four link, front end from the power wagon with the diesel engine doesn't get a front locker like the power wagon does but apparently flexes like but you can get a diesel you can get a diesel in oh, it. Wow. So, so what's you, the name of this the, the ram hd rebel oh, yeah it's kind of cool i do not know this yeah, oh, yeah so, i do know so there's pxls that are starting to come out with those now and i think that's the new top dog is this is this like you know you get the four link from the front end so so um yeah that's cool regular Ram HDs get a radius arm setup, yeah. which just doesn't flex as well and arguably wouldn't ride as well. Um, so if you really want to talk, you know, Cummins equipped Wrangler on steroids, the Rebel HD is real cool. 
Okay, um, I'm seeing what you're talking about yeah. here. This thing is very cool. But the the cool thing with AEV is that like if you're listening and you, and you're like, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to buy a prospector for for whatever reason, and that's fine. You still have access to all of these all the products. accessories. Like yeah. I, I I I've kind of been thinking lately. I'm like, boy, like a, a Ram Rebel with you know you can fit 35s on them stock Mm -hmm. and to do the aev bumpers and it and it has a rear locker one of the things that i i think it's important for people to know is don't get hung up on the front locker thing on an hd truck and i'm just going to be very open here first of all these have huge engines they have a thousand so much weight pressing down in those and they have a thousand foot pounds of torque so if you have a the reason why they don't have a front locker the the ford doesn't have a front locker even yep. the tremor mm-hmm. it has a front limited slip yep. mechanical um the the ram doesn't come with a front locker outside of the power wagon and the power wagon has never come with a diesel because if they put a thousand foot pounds of torque to and, a locked front axle they're going to blow and you get stuff chassis up bind, it's going to go pfft. it's going to blow everything up so everybody has to get over this you know, full size HD trucks have to have front lockers. That's not true. They have traction control. So they have these advanced systems that limit wheel spin, but they're controlled in, they know how much torque is being applied to that front end and they can adjust it to protect the front differential. I I don't think, I don't think they need them. And they're just, I don't think they need them. So massive. And and you're not, you're not, I mean, yes, you can take this truck virtually anywhere i think the use case for a lot of it is going to be mild trails and forest service roads with a full-size truck you get a lot of flotation from the big tires you get the comfort you get the load carrying capacity and another thing i really like about the rams i I guess i've talked a little bit about maybe some shortcomings they have um shortcomings that are totally fine to live with and not yeah, but really you have that, to we have to be we open have to, about it you know yeah. like everybody else in the market in that segment has better options anyway um what i love about the ram is it's actually a small truck if you get the you know the the quad cab with the six and a half foot bed um what converted me away from the gladiator was knowing that the dimensions for all intents and purposes were nearly identical like we, we're talking maybe six inches in overall vehicle length and nearly speaking non prospector XL, nearly the same vehicle width. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they're, I, I, I really like them. You know, you get into the Ford, like somebody told me and, and, and I when when you kind of stack it up, you see how it's true that a, that a eight foot bed Ram is nearly the same length as a six and a half foot bed. Ford. Oh, interesting. They're a little bit more compact trucks. The engine, I think, comes a little further into the cab. The hood's a little shorter. Just the, it's it's a really nicely thought out package yeah. in terms of sizing. They're not as big as you'd think. Hmm. Um, yeah, lot to like about them. So, so if you were, what's the mat spec? Okay, if I'm building a, if I'm building a PXL, let's start with the truck. Okay. Um, I don't know if I would do the, the, the limited and longhorn again. I think I would probably just do a, do a Laramie, um, with, I want to say they call it the level two. Cause you know, you're spending, you're spending when you're already spending that much, I think that level two package, which is what gets you like the 12 inch screen and the, uh, the cooled seats yeah. and a lot of the technology uh, on the vehicle, it gets you like the dual pane glass. So it's pretty quiet inside. I would get a Laramie with the level two package. Um, I would love for, for now for it to be a, a rebel. I don't know if you can get the rebel in the 3,500. I think that's 2,500. Only. Yeah. It looks like it's 2,500. Only. Yeah. Um, but that might be enough kind of off-road fun performance for me to want to take that. But realistically I would choose a 3,500. I'd get the high output motor, um, that comes with the ice and transmission. I would do the anti-spin rear differential. And then with AEV, I would do the XL pack. Um, you know, I think I think that the standard Prospector XL package is everything you could ever need. Um, I, I would argue that you might want the winch. 
Um, I would argue that you might want the, the front brush guard. I definitely wanted the lights on the front. I think that they look pretty good. I just, mine didn't come with it. Yeah. Um, you know, but yeah, that's what it would be. And that's how I would spec it. I mean, I, I would ideally love to see what Ram's going to do for 24, but they might just be running this powertrain for a long time. There's yeah. rumors of some kind of diesel electric yep. hybrid kind of, uh, you know, from, I, I've been hearing that for a while. Um, that would be, that would be really, really cool. Cause that's the only way that we're really going to get these HD trucks to, to be practical if they're electrified sure. is some kind of, you know, like it's gotta a, be a combination. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's going to end up being something. So that's, that would be my dream. But if I was to build one right now, yeah, that 3,500 would be the way to go. Yeah. It'd be 3,500 regular cab tray bed for you. I, 41. I would still, I would still do the, the, the kind of the standard configuration I'll call it, which a compromise for the mega cab is really that next generation cab that will will solve a lot of those problems. It's a yeah. little bit longer. It's a little bit more efficient inside. Like the seats end up taking up in the quad cab or crew cab or whatever we're calling it, they end up taking quite a bit of room, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I don't know. I, I really enjoyed having this vehicle for a year. Um, you know, I had, I had zero problems on the AEV side. It's cool that they do warranty everything. Um, I had quite a few recalls with the truck. Like I think that Rams for 22 model year, which there's still a lot on dealer, um, dealer lots, they're on stop sale right now. Mm. Some heater grid in the intake. Um, Interesting. Glow, it's kind of like a glow plug thing. Um, but yeah, I they're, also had a lot amazing. of, I had a lot of problems with the, with their infotainment. Mm. So for 22, they switched to wireless CarPlay and half of the time it would crash. They did an update on it. It would still crash. This, the entire screen would become unresponsive. And the problem is that there's so much controlled through that screen. All the climate control almost. You, you've got, yeah, you've got some basic buttons on the sides, um, but you'd have to, you know, constantly reset this screen and that, and that did fix it. But um, yeah, I think there's some things that are, again, not on the AEV side, but the prospector is tied to the truck. Yeah, Most sure. of my, you know, journalistic -y complaints are, 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 would be related to the Ram side. Well, and speaking of Prospector, it'll be interesting to see if AEV does anything now with the new GM, you know, either the Chevrolet or the, or the GMC uh, yeah. on the XL side, because it's already, it already looks like a Prospector from the factory. Yeah. So if it, they did a if they did a forty inch tire package, uh, that would be pretty if, amazing. If you're listening to this podcast and you're and you're like, oh man, like yeah, maybe I want a little bit more modern of a truck. Um, I don't maybe need is sub, something that is as large, and maybe I don't want something that is as expensive. I'm gonna think there's a lot of people in that boat. That is why this Chevy Silverado HD Bison, yeah, AV package. However, I'm not a, I'm not a Chevy guy, but I'm looking at Chevys <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I've never been a GM guy and I just, well, just they're have, listening you know, to just, the market. I'm using one. I'm driving a AT4. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I think it's kind of public knowledge that there's a little bit of drama with AEV and Jeep and that kind of stuff. Like I think Jeep decided, well, we're going to do this ourselves with Mopar. And it's yeah. like, okay, well, when people want to actually spend like you know, five X what these parts cost because they have, you know, Jeep performance parts on them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, let me know. So it's so cool to see Chevy and GM capitalizing yep. on the, the quality that AEV can provide. Well, and then look, Jeep just came out with their 20th anniversary Rubicon AEV edition. Cause they finally realized like, Oh, we probably shouldn't like, yeah, we're gonna, we're, <laughs> we're going to be behind in the boat here. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that new, that new GMC and the new Chevrolet HD, I mean, these, these are very cool. They, they look near perfect. All of the qualms that I had using the prospector as a daily driver or whatever. Yep seem to in theory kind of be fixed by this you know it's on 
it's on 35s. Easily fits fits 37s. It's got the great looking, you know, AEV design bumpers, you know. Uh, Multimatic suspension, boron steel skid plates, rear yeah. locking differential. And this boron steel stuff, if you don't know, is like, it's crazy. It's crazy. Like, I, I, I think that Matt Felderman from AEV, like, they had a regular, like, kind of differential skid mm -hmm. that was made out of steel, and they had one that was made out of boron steel. Boron steel is like twice as strong, and it's like a Heck. billion times lighter. It is, yeah. Um, which, you know, saves your payload. It does. So you put more stuff in it. So Prospector, very interesting option for overland travelers. I think that we're seeing more and more migration to full-size trucks. It makes sense. And vehicles like this just make sense. Like, it, I think when you factor in the total cost of ownership on an AEV Prospector XL, so early models still sell, bar some examples that have hundreds of thousands of miles. You know, uh, they'll still sell for 60 to 70 grand previous generation with 50 to 80,000 miles on them. Yep. Those trucks sold for what? Probably like 80 to 90. Yep. What would it cost you to actually build a truck like that? Yeah. You go to your local four-wheel time... drive shop and, and please support your local four-wheel drive shop. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is that they're still going to charge you $150 an hour for labor to do all this stuff, yep. to fabricate this, to fabricate this. And AV kind of has it done. So, and it's way more efficient. So I'm sure that their shop rate is similar or maybe even more expensive, but they can do it in half the time yeah. because they have a process for it. So they just rip through all these modifications. Exactly. It's 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 that assembly line kind of mentality. There's also a snorkel available There's too. There's a snorkel. Which means that it's totally overland ready now. I, Could I you imagine how deep the water would have to be? Yeah. <laughs> so it's literally just for dust. I don't know if I would do the snorkel. I think the cab's pretty quiet inside. I would value that. I, I know friends. It's that the have, overland wave though. Friends that did the snorkel, they get, they get some wind noise and yeah. I know that it's like, Oh, right. So there's, sir. I'm like, <laughs> okay. The wind noise is still annoying and that's just going to be a fact of reality with anything that's, you know, cars are so aerodynamically tuned these days. Sure. So anyway, I would, those uh, are great insights on the I prospector. I would buy it again. Um, would I have a, a serious look at the Chevy, HD Bison thing, the truck that we all know about now. Um, yeah, I would, I would have a look at that. Yeah. I think the the Prospector XL will always be a little more exotic, mm -hmm. um, and I would really that it would it would be very very tempting to me with an eventual driveline update, just to get it into competition with the rest of the market yeah. for the truck. Uh, I'm sure there's Ram, nothing, Ram will do that. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with what's out there. I mean, we're talking that it only has. You know, torque in the 800s. Yeah, I know. Like, let's be real. <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> Which was unheard of even a decade ago. Yeah, so. yeah. So, well. Well, thanks for that, Matt. This is this is a good conversation. Yeah, Check out yeah. the Prospector XL. AV is a good company. Yeah, so. we like them. Yep. So, we thank you all for listening, and we'll talk to you next time.